Hello and welcome to No CB, a grand strategy podcast. I am your host, TJ Hafer, and I am here as usual with Rose. Hello. With Lambert. Hello there. And with Father Loris. Hi. Hi. And we have two special guests this week joining us from Paradox Development Studio. Uh, we have Groogi. Hello, guys. And we have Johan. Yo, guys. Uh, and uh, they've been working very hard on the recently announced uh, Europa Universalis IV Emperor expansion, which we're going to talk about uh, a little bit later in the show. Um, so if you've got questions, I would say don't post them yet because we might not scroll up and see them. Um, but when we get to the point that we are talking about the expansion, um, I believe you guys, you, you can't talk about anything that hasn't been announced yet, if, if I'm correct. But any of the dev diaries that are out already are fair game. Uh, yeah. I've okay. kind of. Kind of. <laughs> I mean, we, we have like we've been doing dev diaries for what, like a year? So we've yeah, covered quite a, a lot. It's been a while. Yeah. Anyway, we're starting with the uh, CK3 dev diary for this week, which was about tutorials and the encyclopedia. Um, they showed off how tooltips are going to work. Uh, we're going to have tooltips within tooltips. We're going to have like an actual in-game encyclopedia of concepts, which is really cool. And then um, these advice pop-ups that uh, kind of can give you feedback on suggestions of things that you should be doing. Um, you know, CK2 notoriously is a game that, you know, I was still discovering basic mechanics when I already had over 150 hours played. So I think this is going <laughs> to be a very uh, welcome addition. Um, what did you guys think about this dev die or anything that stuck out in particular? Heretical I map movement. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, the the camera <laughs> tooltip says use the W, A, S, and D keys to move around the map. So CK3 <laughs> is on the right side of history. CK3 so okay. stands with the king. <laughs> this is this is not okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not right. Me and Lambert uh, have been in the same camp for a long time. <laughs> yeah. So Gr Grugi, you're not a you're not a W, A, S, D guy. No, that's for that's for uh, the map modes. Yeah, W is the political map mouth. This is the way speaking heresy. it is. I mean, <laughs> honestly, though, we should both have the option of choosing which one we would prefer. Oh, yeah. yeah. There would be well, no need to talk of heresy if we just came together <laughs> in a secular kind of system and said that you can choose whatever the hell you want. But that's not the case, so you're all going to burn in hell. <laughs> <laughs> the best way of doing it is, like, move a cam camera around with WSD, but use the edge of a map to... Like select the map mode. So top of the map. Is. No. <laughs> you just scroll the top oh, of the map. Political map mode. Oh man. Yeah, this is just sorry. wrong. Yeah. This is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. This, this okay, is what so this is what happens when I let someone else be a creative lead on a project. They change everything <laughs> that's important in life. So 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 Johan, what is your preferred way to move the map? Uh, edge scrolling, probably, and I used the uh, oh. arrow arrow keys. Edge scrolling and arrow keys. Okay, well, you heard it here. I guess that's I guess that's the only correct answer then. Um, okay, half the man of culture. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm just glad that Imperator and also CK3 allows you to turn off edge scrolling because if you've got more than one screen, edge scrolling is a bloody nightmare. Especially if you have it in windowed full screen. Right. And the only true way to have it, yeah. Click over to adjust something in OBS or something while you're live and streaming, and the whole map just slides with you. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought you wanted to go and see America. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Every every once in a while, I'll alt tab out of E4 and then alt tab back in, and it's just like zooming around the world at like hyperspeed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just because I left the mouse in in a weird spot. Um, fast enough, it goes back in time so you can undo the mistakes. <laughs> yeah, um, I think my favorite part about this dev diary was this this suggestions menu. Um, just because there's stuff I always forget to do. Like even as like an experienced CK uh, or Crusader Kings player, um, you know, I, I like being like, oh yeah, you know, here's here's some some duchies you can create. You know, here's some people you might want to increase your opinion with. It's almost like having your your uh, counselors like come to you and be like, "Okay, my lord, here's here's the 
problems in the realm right now that uh, you might want to pay attention to. But the um, real question is, is one of the advisors an Elvis impersonator? <laughs> what? What? what did that come <laughs> yeah. from? Yeah. It's a, it's civilization, civilization 2. Civilization. Yeah, oh, Civilization 2. We yes. Oh, I, I forgot sk- about I- that. Oh, will it also say say something like uh, "You will regret this"? Like from Sims. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. A combination of the two best yeah. devices in video games, right? Like, <laughs> I played Sims oh, Two when I was like ten years old. You expect me to remember? This? Yes, but that was like the coolest part as a ten-year-old was the advisors no and being able to build your throne room. I just know that. So, yeah, exactly. That's the only part I remember. Is oh, I've just ended turn and I can build a new thing on my throne room, and that's awesome. I don't know it? how uh, how that oh, happened throne room was or what caused an three, extra piece it? of throne room to happen, know, but it was cool. <laughs> yes. Was it like your castle or something? Civ 2 was the one that didn't have historical leaders, right? It was just ra- your leader was just some rando. Yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, the yeah. best Civ then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, 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 I don't I like historical those. leaders in Civ. Uh, okay, well. That's no, why, so you, you that's don't why like I'm a heretic Abraham and think that Beyond Earth is the best. No, no, I can I can quite definitively say no on that one. Um, not not in this context. I, I'll look at him in a toga in other contexts, but not when I'm playing a game. It's nothing better than seeing Mao Mao Zedong dressed as a caveman leading China. You know, it's like. Sid never yeah, really I, got it for me because because of those things. Oh, here's cavemen fighting against like marines on the beach. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, that's see, that's it's like my the image of part. Roman soldiers with M4s. <laughs> that was my that was my favorite part of like Civ and uh, Rise of Nations was just invading someone when I'm like three tech ages ahead of them. Um, <laughs> Which I guess you were the that's colonial kind of power. What EU4 is. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of just how EU4 works if you play as as a European. But um, or if you played yeah. as uh, EU, uh, you played in EU3 and you were uh, a one province minor uh, merchant republic. Yeah, you could then game yeah, this tech slider. system, and you're just like, oh, I'm you yeah. know la- last tech, and it's sixteen hundred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, the, the funny thing that happened in our recent multiplayer is the Enlightenment spawned in, like, Bengal. <laughs> so, like, Southeast Asia and China got it way before Europe did, and, and we, like, weren't as far ahead of everyone else's technology as we usually are, which was pretty funny. Um, uh, I've seen it spawn there in, like, games that I purposely set up to be weird, like, imported from CK2, but that's the first time I've seen in, like, a vanilla EU4 game that the Enlightenment just spawned way the hell out away from here. Well, um, in multiplayer, I find, like, technology uh-huh. spreads rather quickly anyway, right? Because, you know, somebody... People, people are like sharing it with each other. Up. Well, not yeah. not in ours, because everybody hates each other, so there's no spread from friendly nations. <laughs> that's the best kind of EU4 game, then. Yeah, it yeah. is, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I, yeah, I have in, I have in the uh, EU4. Uh, um, we have like the devs playing a mega campaign, and I in George, like in the deep south, I got the enlightenment, and that was such a like, <laughs> like hmm, that's kind of interesting. In the last few EU4 campaigns I've done multiplayer in, uh, colonialism has spawned in Japan about like five times out of five. <laughs> The Japanese love rushing for colonialism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's basically the entire game of Japan, right? <laughs> Helped me in Malaya, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> oh, Malaya gets so powerful, Mighty Plague, because you've got all those provinces next to you that are just really high dev. They're just easy just to, like, mop up, right? Well, since that was we were the, talking that was the game about that you were Civ, what do we think about the encyclopedia now in CK3 that they're adding? I love it. Well, the Civ oh, yeah. is probably the best aspect of Civilization games, right? I mean, like... Oh, definitely. Yeah. Thank you thank you for bringing it back to CK3. <laughs> yeah. <a> big <laughs> I can tell y'all are the, the true EU4 nerds here. <laughs> well, I like the game, but I like CK better, so... Right. Well, the, like, every, like, previous Paradox games... You can't games... say that when Johan and Grookey's here. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Johan worked on the original Crusader Kings, which was That's my first true. introduction to the PDX games, so... I think Johan, you've worked on pretty much every PDS game to some degree, haven't you? Uh, did we lose so. him? No, he's Sounds in here. like we I lost him. But uh, yeah, I can't. He, I, I mean, can't he, hear you. He's right the now, creative but, director. Yeah. He's worked on basically everything. Yeah, yes. I think I think yeah, he's yeah. worked on everything. Is that's, yeah. that's my <laughs> understanding anyway? 
I mean, uh, um, if you look in credits, it's going to be on every single project that uh, PDS <laughs> puts out. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like ever previous PDS games have had an encyclopedia, but it was called the wiki and you had to like go to a separate <laughs> window for it. Um, so I think it'll Which, be great to have this in the game. Yeah. I mean, Sigurdu Sigurdu also not had everyone. The, it's a good to have the history links as well. Right. Yes, yeah. 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 But that only really worked cool. at the start. I love that. Yeah. And not everyone plays on dual monitors or has a separate mobile device or something where they yeah. can pull up the Wikipedia page or Gamepedia page with more information. So having oh, this no, directly in the game is great. CK2 had the, um, well, it had all the Wikipedia links to historical rulers. So you could like go back and it, and it went into like really, really, really deep ones. <laughs> You know, like um, <laughs> famously, you know, because um, Chris King was working on the game, right? I mean, like all the all the Scottish clans were like very, very well represented. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the history yeah. of Scotland is impeccable. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's. Like, I can. I can always tell when Chris King had his hand in something if if Scotland is uber detailed. <laughs> 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 yeah. Speaking um, of encyclopedias, um, I believe I remember there was a Stellaris mod that added a web browser into the game itself that you could then like pull up the wiki on. Um, wait, I'm fairly sure that was that. How? Really? Uh, magic, mate. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> I don't know. I like playing with mods. I mean, if you ask it. me how they work, I can't. I can't go into that. At this point, people have figured out how to use arbitrary code execution to spawn R wings from Star uh, Star Fox in a vanilla cartridge of Ocarina of Time. So I, it's not that that unusual uh, that uh, you'd be able to find some workaround on PC to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Apparently, the browser is a feature of Solaris, and the, the mod I was thinking of um, used it to show graphs. Ah, oh. interesting. Okay. Right. I mean, sometimes when I see what some mods do, I go like, "How does that not make the game crash?" <laughs> it, that was um, was that John Wordsworth that made that mod? Oh, maybe it was. Yes, I think it was. Uh, for those that don't know, Wordsworth is uh, the tech director for PDS. Okay, cool. All right. So, um, any last thoughts on the uh, CK3 tutorials and encyclopedia dev diary before we uh, look I at some like stats for Hearts of Iron? The nested tooltips. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, mm. Having seen that at PDXCon, uh, yeah, tooltips within tooltips within tooltips is... Uh, that's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's, and it definitely makes the game more than, accessible. It's it's a lot better than opening like 40 tabs and like working your way backwards <laughs> on the wiki. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which or, is how I would normally do this. Yeah. One thing they mentioned in the dev diary is that they didn't want to do walls of text. And if you turn on the tutorial in CK2 or the help tips, it literally is walls of text slamming you in your face with everything about <laughs> that one panel you just opened. And it's overwhelming when you're nice. a new player. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think one thing was, I will uh, say. There's only one other game I can think of that does that, which is like, um, oh, gosh, I forgot, I forgot my name. Is it? Um, Advocates. Advocates. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. John's, John Schaefer loves the loves nested tooltips. For sure. It's really, it's um, really neat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the one other cool thing, I won't stay on it too long because people in chat were complaining, but I do like these animated toasts. Um, I like yeah. that the UI is a little bit more lively and a little bit more dynamic. Yeah, I yeah. Think. I was going to bring that up. I think I was contractually obliged to bring up the art. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Because, <laughs> oh my goodness, look at the little animations yeah. and yeah. Oh, the, the little unscrolling. I hope it's like a little sound effect that goes along with that, right? Because I think <laughs> one of the one of the most wonderful things about CK2 is the, um, the bird sound that happens when you get sent a chat message. Yeah. It's brilliant. Fantastic, you know, and when you send it off, you send like a pigeon away. It's got that sound effect. <laughs> so I hope when you get these trait gains, it's like you know, you know, maybe a little announcement or like you know, right, like, Doo -doo. or just a ding. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, well, like so, a something of, like, a subtle court chime, court chime or something, something <laughs> thematic. You know, like 
Um, yeah. For the for the suggestions thing that you've got open at the moment, I hope they lean into the role play aspect. And when you click this, it'll be like a message from your advisor saying, "Oh, you can increase the opinion of this person doing this way, my liege." Like lean into the the that role play cool. aspect that's so strong in in CK. That would be cool. I would definitely love to see that. My liege, we, you can declare war on, on our neighbor here. We've got, the, his land should be rightfully ours, and we have <laughs> the claim. You should declare war. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Clearly I'd my advisor is a war hawk. I'd love to see that. Um, you, know, you know what else we love to see, though? Uh, we love to see that uh, 70% of players who play Republican Spain <laughs> in uh, Hoi Forgo Anarchist um, yeah, uh, Podcat <laughs> released a dev diary, uh, with statistics about, um, what's been going on with, uh, La Resistance so far, and how many people chose different sides in, uh, and all the different focus trees. Um, obviously I was, I was very pleased to see how popular the anarchist path is, even though I still haven't been able to actually win the war as the anarchists. I just need to get good. Um, what, what statistics jumped out to you guys, uh, from, from what they've got going here? I think you just mentioned it. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Basically. Uh, I knew, I knew Loris would be excited that the car lists are very popular. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm surprised they're not more popular though. Like that's, uh, that's my surprise. I'm surprised. I don't think a lot of people know who they are is the thing. Like, I don't think the, the, you know, the car list faction in Spanish civil war is very well known. Well, I've seen it. I don't it. know. I don't know what to say. Most are lost. Most people are lost already. Lost souls of the wilderness. You know, <laughs> I, they have no. crazy hats. Their nutcases are <laughs> hilarious. Like, <laughs> gotta love them. I'm not sure about single player. And I mean, they have the stats here. But in multiplayer, I'm seeing a lot of people are liking doing the car list as Spain if they have a player as Portugal, and the uh-huh. two of them will team up because they can mm. help each other. Yeah, yeah. And become really powerful, but. That opens all yeah. sorts of new doors of for people multiplayer. supporting a royal wedding. Oh yeah, Portugal. Uh, oh. Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people going for that royal wedding. <laughs> well, course, same, yeah. same for France. Forty-five percent of people going with monarchist France as well. See, just yep. monarchy is clearly just the the most objectively superior form of government. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, our boy Napoleon the uh, <laughs> Napoleon the sixth is the most popular by far of all the French monarchs. Yeah, well, yeah, look, of course, not yeah, all yeah. monarchs are created equal, and some are worse than others. Like <laughs> anyone that has the Bonaparte surname. <laughs> and as the Brit has opinions here. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm free to share them. <laughs> um, no, it's also- not down democracy up monarchy. You can have both. <laughs> you can have democracy under absolute monarchy. <laughs> you can vote for things. We just have a bigger vote. I'm, so, I, I'm not sure that's I quite think, how it works. But sure, so you, you like, can how, believe that. Democracy under absolute monarchy, does that just mean like every vote is just a non-binding referendum? <laughs> like, no, just, I mean, you, you. everyone gets a vote, and okay. the monarch's vote is worth 51% of the entire country. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah sounds legit. <laughs> sounds super fair. Uh, the yeah. monarch is uh, for controlling share in the democracy. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically just a corporation. I'm the All CEO right. of this country. <laughs> so at this point, you've become a megacorp, essentially. Yeah, it's strange how similar they are. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, it is. It's, yeah. Um, the other really funny thing I thought was that only 4.4% of people followed the historical path, which I think because... The historical path for Spain is kind of boring. Like <laughs> Franco wins, and then you just sit out the rest of the conflict, more or less. Like, um, yeah, I'm just gonna go, uh, uh, go around uh, telling people Catalan isn't a real language, and uh, just kind of hang out, you know. And also, one of the joys <laughs> of Hoi Four is taking things in a non-historical route. So. It makes sense that the yeah. historical path would be so unsupported by players. Well, that's yeah. what I love in all Paradox games. It's it's not a history simulator. It's what I call it an A history simulator. It's like all of the, the things you see on like alternate history on Reddit, but you can play it. You, you're creating alternate history, and that's what I find the most 
fun about these games. You can start as Gotland and turn Sunni, and then convert all of Scandinavia. <laughs> yeah. If you want to. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much. You have a little ant hill um, that you poke at uh, every now and then. <laughs> and see what happens. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. So obviously I'm, I'm all for the anarchists. Uh, do you guys have a favorite um, path for the new uh, Focus Trees and La Resistance that you've tried out so far. I like Portugal's uh, path, where their royalist path, once they merge with Brazil. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It turns them yeah, quite that's, powerful. That's... The only path I took when playing as Spain was a swift path to destruction, so I can't really say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what happened I'm, to the anarchists historically, so, you know. They, I, anarchist path for me, then. <laughs> <laughs> I am uniquely terrible at this game. Well, you've only been, you know, only played it, like, what, how many hours? Like, you're, you're not, you're not a, you're not a, uh, 225. Pro, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then that's a little bit less of an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's less than an excuse. I have... 302, and I think I have a better understanding of the game than you do, Lambert. <laughs> oh, beyond say? any doubt. <laughs> Earth and Iron 4. I'm at 274 hours right now. I actually thought it was higher than that, but I've also played some on other builds that track time differently, so um, probably around 300 total. But mm-hmm. um, Yeah, so... Um, we're not we didn't get like a big dev diary for Stellaris uh this week, but we did get this very cool story trailer. Um and I am gonna mute us and play this really quick because uh for some reason it won't let me do both. So we won't be talking over this. I'll probably edit out of the final podcast and just leave a link in the description. Um, but I think this is definitely worth sharing because <laughs> of man, like three minutes of silence in the podcast. Like <laughs> still, still Lars trailers are so good. Like, uh, mm, phenomenal. Yeah, I, I, I love the trailers for Stellaris. They're some of the best video game trailers I've ever seen. They're gorgeous. Are they outsourced or are they like, um, in office? I don't actually know. Uh, so I think they're directed by someone in house, right? Uh, who actually, like, you know, does the art and so on. I'm not sure if it's outsourced or not. I think it, it's so. like called Steven. I mean, Steven is yeah. one of the people in charge of it, yeah. But uh, he no, usually does Ma- the funny ones. No, it's Marcus that does uh, direct the, the one, and they're completely outsourced. I can't yeah, remember okay, his yeah. last name. Herbertson or Herbertson yeah. or something. It was... The script was written by Stephen K. Wells for this one. He wrote about it on Twitter. Okay, oh. cool. It's there. Really? I used to do all the, yeah, like, like yeah, the, the, the really funny ones, right? The, um, what's it called? Like okay. the CK2. The cheap ones that were really funny, like back in my day. Um, I think Stephen did most of those, right? Uh, not for CK2, not the original ones. Those before his time. Oh, all right. We're back. And we're back. We're back. Uh, yeah, so March 17th, uh, we have a, uh, release date, um, very, uh, very exciting stuff. Um, before we get on to our main topic, which is going to be E4, we also had a very brief, uh, Imperator dev diary, well, it's not that brief, I guess. Um, they're This adding- is the longest dev diary they've had for a few weeks now. It's not, it's not brief. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Magna Gratia is adding um, mission trees for uh, Athens and Sparta. Um, Lambert, since you're kind of our, our Imperator expert, and uh, you've already talked at length about this on your channel, what do you think the highlights are of, of this dev diary? Uh, new formables. Well, I guess Delian League isn't really new, but like you get yeah. a new flag, and... That's got to be the most rewarding part of any run in a Paradox game is forming a tag. <laughs> yeah, new map name, new tag. Yeah, we've got the Peloponnesian League there, and then the Delian League way down at the bottom, which is just like a fancier version of the Athenian flag, but I'm into it. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because I, I said Athens and Sparta made sense for this pack, and then you pointed out that Magna Gratia isn't actually mainland Greece. It's 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 like southern Italy. And apparently yeah. 
by being wrong, I was actually right. So <laughs> kids, take that yeah. as a lesson. Um. <laughs> you don't always have to be wrong. Sorry, you don't always have to be right to be right. There you right. go. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, guys, do you want to know a secret? Yes. Uh, Max, yes. Absolutely. The design of the that uh, content pack was done first, and then the name was picked afterwards. So. Ah, oh. okay. Fair enough then. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I love playing as Athens. I'm definitely glad that they're getting submissions. Um, currently, you you have to kind of be a little bit devious at the beginning dealing with Phrygia uh, to get to a point where you're actually independent and uh, can, can start doing fun stuff. Um, but one of my most, probably one of my top two favorite games of Imperator so far I was playing as Athens. And uh, we had this big naval battle i posted about it on twitter to to basically determine the fate of uh the entire the entire eastern mediterranean basically and we won outnumbered like two to one (laughs) with our superior navy and uh became the the hegemons of of greece uh from a very kind of underdog position so more flavor for athens is very cool i'll definitely be doing another athens run when this comes out um, your your situation there is basically replace Phrygia with Persia, and that's entirely historically accurate. <laughs> See, I actually worked I worked with Egypt, which became a an issue later because I made Egypt so strong to kill Phrygia that they eventually became my worst enemy after Phrygia was not uh, an issue anymore. So that can I'm happen to, so easily in these games. Yeah, and then I was trying to pit the Seleucids against Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> Once Egypt got scary, so I was I was kind of doing uh kind of doing a uh, puppet master thing um, with all the the Diadochi states. Um, anything else in this dev diary that stood out to you guys? I'll let someone else have a have a have a poke before I I say my piece. I guess. Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just happy to see more unique mission trees. Yeah, yeah. same here. Yeah, Always Sparta. Always a good thing in these games. Sparta, I, I'm sure, will be popular. <laughs> can I add something to it? Yeah. Um, the mission system that was designed last autumn was designed to be super powerful, but if there's one thing we've learned through uh, developing things is that the first time the content designers start working with a tool, they are they, it takes a while until they start getting uh, really using it. And then... Uh, each iteration, when you when you make more stuff, they become more and more powerful, and they learn more. So I just look forward to see this one in the game, and then what they can do in the future with the mission system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I might get like one, like a focus tree, but we get with Spain now. So maybe <laughs> yeah. in a few, years, we get like an incredibly intricate. Mission I I, I actually I really like the mission tree system in Imperator. I think it's like a, a great kind of middle ground between focus trees and Hoi 4 and like the old way that missions worked in EU4 and the new way that missions worked in EU4. Like it's got some dynamism, but it's also structured. Um, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. The, the way that, 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 uh, missions work in Imperator for sure. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, back- I'm, was that Lambert? I'm saying going going back to your point about you know um, the designers are get more used to the tool and it'll be better over time. I I saw that especially with um, with EU four when the new mission system came out or it is missions yeah yeah um, the earlier missions added were um, you know conquer this and then you get claims on this you go conquer this and there's some variety as well but it wasn't until I saw the Moogle mission tree that I was like. Okay, this thing is actually really powerful and a really, you know, massive leap forward from the old mission system. Mm-hmm. And I can see that in this as well, because things like, for example, you know, having a, one of the requirements for your mission to be, you know, average happiness of a certain type of pop or um like a certain amount of uh, buildings, a population of this amount in this city. Those are things that haven't really been seen in the 
other mission trees. So it's just like more and more different kind of conditions are coming in with this mission system, uh, the, these two trees than we've seen in like the Punic Wars one or uh, the, the generic ones as well. So it seems like there's as more coming out, there's more different like things coming in, which is cool to see. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, looking forward to uh, checking these new missions out and seeing what you know the designers end up doing with the system <laughs> in the future. Mm-hmm. As uh, Johan said, as 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 the people get more experience with it and think of cool new things to do with it, um, flavor is. I want more content awesome. for my my niche yeah. interest of Tibetan history in this time yeah. period. <laughs> That's what I want. That's what I mean. Yeah, I'm I'm waiting on the barbarians, obviously. Uh the Gauls and the Germanics. That's that's what I'm oh, yeah. uh, looking well, most I'll tell you forward about, to. That's probably one of the most fun playthroughs if he plays Anglia and you migrate yeah. to it. That's like a really oh, yeah. nice. Oh yeah, for sure. Really nice playthrough. Um, all right. Well, now that we have that out of the way, our main topic uh for this week is going to be uh um Europa Universalis for Emperor, which was Announced yesterday formally, although we've already gotten quite a few dev diaries on it over the, past, the course of the past year. And yep. uh, we'll start by um, playing the trailer real quick. So we're back. Um, yeah. So <laughs> since we have uh, two developers on the show, um, let's let's just start by. Um, so, Johan, what is your uh, what is your kind of role on E4 right now? And what has your role been on this expansion? Oh, yeah. Uh... I've had two different roles. First, I was the creative director that approved Jake's uh, proposal or whatever back. This is like November. When do when did we release uh, Dharma or Golden Century or whatever? Oh, uh, yeah, it was November. Yeah, some, something like twenty eight. Golden Century was beginning of December. Dharma was yeah. in August, early September. May. Yeah, and, and like I, I and Jake was already working on the design for this at that point, and like, yeah. So I first, Got it. Uh, like, yeah, this is fine. There will be a nice expansion for Q two twenty nineteen. Yeah. So oh, thank and you. things changed. Yeah, a lot of things have changed. <laughs> We've iterated on things a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, Grugi. So, what is your what is your role on this project? Kind of been uh, game designer. So, uh, okay. like Jake second in command, and now Joe on, uh, and just like uh, whatever the project needs in order to you know get to where it needs to be to be a good game. Excellent. Yeah, I'm kind of um, been the same since like yeah. when did Jake quit? August, September, or something? Uh, Can't remember. Oh no, he Yeah, it was around he could, just after the U4 land, wasn't it? So yeah, right. Yeah. No, I was before that because it was not a PDX con, so Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so I've been on a project since then. And I've been as uh, Hendrik is the same, kind of like I don't really like think you should only do one thing, you should do whatever you need to get the project done. So I'm like programming, designing Content designing, QAing, whatever is needed to get it out. I mean, I've even done art. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, in, in, instead of like, oh, I'm going to, you know, ball this to, uh, back to like artists to do this uh, later. I just need to s- shift these pixels a few pixels to the left. I'll just do that in yeah. uh, Photoshop myself. But yeah, we yeah. Have- so yeah, the, that's basically what our roles have been. Like, uh, uh, it's kind of like a little bit old school. Like, uh, PDS old school has always been like, you know, you do, you, you're not only the role that you have as a title. You're like what the project needs. Yeah, a little bit okay. indie over yeah, the whole thing. Sense. And yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah. I like it like that. Yeah. So have your fingers uh, in as many pies as possible. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's leave, when you leave. find yourself like making all the concept art. Like, what are you <laughs> leave, like, leave no pie. Can you, can you make is, the tra- trailer uh, for us? <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, that's 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 always been my that's always been my motto is is leave no pie unfingered. 
Um, <laughs> that's that's really filthy. So, so, so uh, Johan, you mentioned this was originally going to be like a Q2 2019 thing and then plans changed. What exactly uh, led it to kind of build up to the scope it is now and, and get, uh, you know, moved back quite a bit? Well, the scope is not this is not been changed, but Jake wanted to make a patch first, a big patch to be out in... When was Smudge supposed to be out April or something? But it got a bit delayed and got out. And yeah, things happened. Okay. Sorry, I'm a little bit like I've been uh, home with fever for three days in a row. So I'm a little bit slow in talking today. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Like corona, right? Hope y'all feel better. Yeah, yeah. yeah patient zero <laughs> for uh, coronavirus in, in Sweden. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did Groogie get you sick? Wasn't Groogie sick last week? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, well, I didn't meet I didn't oh meet Gurugi last week, so because uh, well, well, we've determined that uh, that diseases can spread through the internet because uh, Loris got Lambert sick uh, yeah. through through the I'm Welsh a, internet, a, which is yeah, which is a thumb drive taped to a sheep. So yeah. even with things going through the internet, we just got raided by Mordred Vikings. So yeah. hello, Vikings. Oh, oh. hey, yeah. The uh, the traditional Viking raid. Hello and welcome. Um, yeah, so so uh, traditional. I mean, oh, yeah. the Vikings yeah, raided Italy, didn't they? The Normans went everywhere. Well, the Normans were Vikings eventually. Or yeah, originally. Well, yeah, well, if you go back far enough. Originally, yeah. that's the word I'm looking for. Thank yeah. you. I mean, they were like advanced the Vikings because they were Vikings, but on horses, right? They were Which French like Vikings. The next stage of Vikings, yeah. Um. So. For uh, for the the developers, I'm curious because this is this is going to be this expansion is focusing a lot on Catholicism. It's focusing a lot on on the HRE, on uh, kind of the end game revolu uh, revolutions. There's a lot of map updates coming to Europe. Mm -hmm. um, what what is the um, decision making process to say, hey, let's go back and flesh out something that already has a lot of content versus um, you know, prioritizing tackling something that doesn't have a lot of content yet, like maybe, I don't know, Southeast Asia? Uh, well, I, if I go back to my plans uh, sometime in 20... When did we release Art of War? Basically, after Art of War, I made a huge plan of all the expansions I wanted to make. This does not count all the immersion packs, but basically the scope and the or area of what we should add and what it should be and the name for each expansion and we pretty much follow that plan adding a few immersion packs in in between at times so uh, this was all in the plans since a long time ago am i right okay. in remembering you made that plan in a pub all the important all remember. important plans are made in a pub all the sign meetings <laughs> and all the things like yeah. that uh. I mean, ma Marines were designed by me and Joe and uh, at the pub. So, yeah, yeah, all all the best nice. ideas creatively come after maybe two pints or three. Yeah, yeah or well, so. me, me and Chris, we used to do the design process back in the old days. Where like we went out every Tuesday drinking heavily, and the design ideas we remember the next day <laughs> was the one we implemented. Uh, Two of the most popular uh, PDF games <laughs> were designed that entirely like, a like that. That sounds like a process. That's how we made Hot Shine Free and Victoria 2. Yeah. Well, the, <laughs> that's uh, a great I mean, idea because you know the, because, the you per know, yeah the Persians used filter, to debate right? yeah the Persians used to debate everything once drunk and once sober and only if it sounded like a good idea both ways would they actually implement it. So <laughs> yeah, that, that's a that's a good plan. As yeah. Blondie says in chat, that explains a lot about Vicky too. <laughs> awesome. I, I think if we repost that one, it's it's either he getting crucified or he's uh, getting hailed as uh, as the proper uh, advocate for beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, we're we're kind of refocusing on Europe. The dev diary we got this week um, was mostly about the Pope. Um, there's some changes coming to the kingdom of God decision. Um, oh, you yeah, actually, yeah. actually get a tag tag name change on the map, um, yeah. which is cool. Um, but it's also and not, it doesn't just, destroy the cura, which is just, right. you know, before it was like a punishment to form the kingdom. Yeah. Exactly. You don't get, you don't get quote unquote rewarded by turning off a mechanic, <laughs> yeah, which I really like. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, um, the- like a, a core, a core ca- a mechanic to the main religion that you're supposed to mainly represent, too, right? Like, yeah. It's it's like a, it's a little bit of a nerf to you, but it's also a nerf to every other Catholic, which may be your enemies. Well, we don't so know in yet, that sense, though. We we don't know not, yet because they haven't. Hope. Yeah, they haven't talked about what effect on the curious systems do happen when you become the kingdom of God yet. Because uh, they've said there are going to be some unique things for the Pope when you do form it. So, um, permanent curia controller. I mean, that would be one way to do it. Um, so yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, you'll have to wait and see. Some people here do <laughs> not answer. <laughs> yeah, uh huh. I literally wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> there are pros and cons to having the devs in a <laughs> call when right. you're talking about stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just, um, just, just to make you both squirm. We <laughs> just like wild speculation. They're like, mm, it's not like that, but I can't say anything. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, also, it's always fun. Like, also, like hearing, like, oh, I have considered this, but we're not going to do that and stuff like that. Yeah. Right, right. Um, they've also changed, uh, d- done some changes to uh, uniting Islam. It used to be kind of a yeah, okay, that was cool. I did that. Uh, now you actually get to be called the caliphate. Uh, it's a little bit more... You get the feudal theocracy government. It looks like it's a little bit more of a meaningful um, button to click, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's a run that I, I, I like to do, starting as like some Arabian miner. Um, I most recently did it as uh, Hormuz, and that was a lot of fun. Hormuz is a really fun start. People ask me a lot who are like little overlooked countries in EU4 that I should play as that I might not have thought of before. That's one of my top recommendations. Uh, so when you do form a caliphate, you get the feudal theocracy. That, that overwrites all your... So say if you play the Ottomans and you form a caliphate, mm-hmm. do you get feudal theocracy as the Ottomans too? Like, is that, or do you keep the Ottoman reform? Oh, uh, is that a so this, this decision is something that's implemented by our content designer. Uh, but uh, So I think... I'm going through the script in my head now. I think it will override. We will probably look at, like, because players should always have a choice in, like, you know, what happens to my country when they do things and still yeah. so if you yeah. look at the uh, the kingdom of god you'll see it has two options right so uh, in the event and the one is like you know okay you get this government uh, form and you get locked into it and then you see there's a second option which won't do that but you will still be called kingdom of god but yeah which is the most important part about yes the exactly right. Yeah, map, map. Your name on the map is way more important than any mechanical uh, changes, for sure. And map color. Don't forget map color. If it's a bad map color, I'm I'm not forming it. <laughs> or if it's I formed Germany like once, competing never with again. someone else that you really just you want to be able to have your killer stand out better. Well, then you conquer anybody who has a similar <laughs> color to you. That's the mature way to handle it. Well, that's a CB <laughs> in itself. Two similar that's colors. Not- it's a CB. That that should be a CB like map color too similar, <laughs> um, yeah. Or map color clashing. Like if you're next to somebody who like their map color just really clashes with your map color, yeah, that should be that should also be a CB. Or if your name um, just like slightly cover over them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Although, anything that like everything a letter touches in your name should be automatically made a claim. You know, a permanent clip. Yeah. Of course, this is the No CB <laughs> podcast, so we shouldn't really be advocating for that. We should just say, just declare what we're on them with No CB and yeah. eat the stab <laughs> hit like an adult. So, um, <laughs> um, Kingdom of God special mechanic. Uh, no stab loss for No CBs. <laughs> Uh, and I, Paul, I know the. I think the stream is getting a little bit roboty right now. It's probably a bandwidth issue, but the recorded version should be fine. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, we've got some new quality of life changes coming as well. Um. Uh, we've got a new warning that tells you ahead of time when you're about to cap out on monarch power, and not when you already have wasted monarch power. Yep. <laughs> Which I'm uh, sure all the min maxers in the audience will be excited about. Mm-hmm. In essence, um, a lot of the quality of life things are just like, oh, oh man, I screwed up here. All right, I'm gonna fix it. <laughs> like, make the game tell me <laughs> to not be <laughs> right. an idiot. I literally got right. capped on mill power when playing E4 today. So, <laughs> yeah, that would have come in handy. Yeah. Well, it, it saves that like 
mad frantic thing you do when you just really, really quickly click on, oh shit, I need to develop stuff yeah. really, really quickly yeah. when you frantically click around the map. I'm almost, when you're on multiplayer yeah, and you can't pause. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other interesting thing about this map to me is what the heck is going on with France? Oh. Uh, <laughs> We've shown that we've before, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. That's what France exactly. looked like when I first started playing EU. Yeah. Oh, oh, is that like the starting situation now? Like Orléans yeah. is on the map and... Yeah, it's Armagnac. the... Battle Storm is back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so France yeah. just got a massive power boost. Thanks. Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody needed that, right? The big blue blob well, like, is getting smaller, but getting stronger. That, that could be really interesting, because like the Duke of Orléans was frequently a pain... In the, the the French royalty side, and I love to be a pain in the king's side whenever I can. So, so that, yeah, uh, especially a French king. Yeah. So if you look in the dev diary, it says next next dev diary is estates, and then we'll cover a little bit more there. Okay, cool. I'm oh, very yeah. much looking yeah. forward to the yeah. estate dev diary. Yeah, yeah. Estates I've worked a lot on to try and uh, get it a little bit better. I <laughs> I really badly wanted to get rid of the well. Here's like this kind of like bank of dip and mill and admin power. I can just punch at sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On a timer. Yeah, oh, I never it even... is. It is fifteen. <sighs> it's it's fourteen fifty nine. Time to do my clicks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I usually don't even bother to do that, except like if in competitive multiplayer, I feel like kind of compelled to, but I never felt like it was like a fun <laughs> mechanic to be like, all right, milk, going to milk the estates, get my get my bucket out. Mm. But uh, yeah, that's actually um, one thing I've really enjoyed about playing Merchant Republics lately is I don't have to worry about the estates. Oh, speaking of Merchant Republics, very very happy that uh, we're changing over from a province cap to uh, the new system, which is based on uh, um, the new kind of autonomy system for uh, <laughs> Merchant Republics and Prussian monarchy. I think I've said that on the podcast before. But, yep. Uh, yes, you yeah, have. That's <laughs> I watched. That is, uh, <laughs> that is one of my admin, favorite changes. Admin capacity, I think, isn't it? Uh, governing capacity. Governing, governing capacity, capacity. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh, it's yeah. especially like nice if you're playing as Merchant Republic and, like, let's say you want to form Italy. <laughs> yeah. You... Oh, yeah, um, about that. We're, <laughs> we're not a Merchant Republic anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> um, Are you talking about a succession so... game? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers for, like, three weeks away. <laughs> People will forget. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Um, so there's a lot, uh, there's a lot going on in this expansion and this patch, um, out of what you guys are allowed to talk about, uh, Grugi and Johan, I'm curious, what, what are you most excited about? Like, what have you found to be the most impactful on gameplay and what are just, you know, things that you enjoyed, uh, working on with this? Uh, so for me, estates. Like, uh, uh-huh. like the in, the internal politics of a country is completely different, and it's a lot. M- it feels more rewarding playing with than the like every twenty year press a button, uh, and the you know we'll, we'll see more next week what I mean, and I think a lot of people will agree with me. Uh, and then it's revolutions because guillotine mana is so yeah. such a nice thing. Like, instead of absolutism, all right, yeah, sure, you're swapping out from trying to conquer the world in this way, now you get this thing instead. Mm-hmm. And try, uh, like, and it drives your country to play in a very different way. I think my um, pitch, like, in the design document was something like uh, Horde for Civilized Countries or something like that. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I... You just need the ability to raise stuff. <laughs> <I'm> like, that's, <laughs> that's a... <laughs> well, yeah, I, I almost... A ra- rampaging hordes of Bonaparte. <laughs> <laughs> and then they all starved. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd say I go for Revolution Target in almost half of the campaigns of EU4 I play, so uh, more mechanics for that are definitely going to be cool. And the fact that you don't have to, yeah. like... <laughs> screw yourself over in some really weird specific ways to make it happen 
uh, even though I've memorized how to do it yeah. now at this point, and I can just do it on like muscle memory. Uh, it's like I know exactly when I need to take loans out. I know exactly how many loans I need to take out. I know exactly when I need to take my stability. Uh, revolution <laughs> by seventeen fourteen. All right, let's go conquer the world. Yeah. Um, uh, there was there was a multiplayer I did um, a couple of years back with Arumba and and the the crew we had there, where I went revolutionary as Spain, and I remember being so unbelievably disappointed that uh, my CB to spread the revolution didn't turn my enemy Spain revolutionary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now it will. That yeah. that really disappointed me because I was I was uh, <laughs> kind of joking with him uh, quite a bit because he got very salty about it that I was going to turn him revolutionary and then it wasn't an option. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh well, yeah. Well, I I used to like do it in a sort of janky way where he's like, okay. As part of this piece, you have to allow that that um, disaster that, that causes you to turn into like a republic or a, what's it called a um, uh, is it a parliamentary democracy? Yeah, you become a constitutional um, republic. I think it is at least the old it, yeah. the old government used to be called that, but you became yeah basically okay. that's yeah. like you know that's part of a peace deal. You have to do that. Like, it's just a pretty, pretty please promise that you're going to yeah. do that for me and not be so. Well, now you can actually force them to be that. And you can, like, actually see the spread of, like, uh, the egalitarian ideals of people. Oh, beautiful. Lovely. That's going to be That's so great. fun. And, and, Especially, and like, the, playing as the reactionary forces, too, to try and crush that down. Yeah, and it's, yeah. A, of, like, you know, the monarchs getting, oh, they're losing prestige because they're not fighting the revolution. Now it's actually literally, like, oh, my peasant think they're equal to me. Now they won't pay taxes anymore. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, just that kind of thing just cannot be stood for. No, I assume, I assume must be put down. you're playing like a multiplayer game at the moment. How's that dynamic working in a multiplayer game now, like um, in your experience so far? Oh, you mean uh, internally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we 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 we're not that y- there yet. But but so, but soon hopefully. Soon. <laughs> Who are you playing in your current internal dev uh, multiplayer then? Like I'm, uh, we don't have uh, an internal uh, dev MP right now. That's that's what oh, I mean. Okay. Got you. Oh, okay. Got you. Got you. Got you. But we're hopefully so, setting something up soon. Interesting. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember if the de- uh, the dev diary on revolutions mentioned this. Is it tied? to the enlightenment institution at all now because i was joking last night in our mp game um i mentioned we're, we're playing this big multiplayer game where the the enlightenment spawned in bengal for some reason so like europe didn't get it till like the 1750s um but i was the revolution target and i was just joking around like oh yeah we're just like Voltaire, never heard of him. Universal rights of man, nah, we just hate the king. Like, <laughs> well, there's no theory behind this. We're just mad. <laughs> uh, let me check. Uh, I'm actually pulling up yeah. the design document, which is 70 pages long. Uh, <laughs> Uh, when Age of Revolution has started, there will be a yearly sh- check on each province over 30 development with Enlightenment present and part of a great power okay. country that has embraced Enlightenment. So, yes. Got it. So, I would have had to wait for the Enlightenment to spread. Yep. Uh, in, okay, that that's that's historical and good, I think. Yep. And, yeah. and um, also, um, I think we've removed the lock for only Europe. Uh, like, it's like, it's designed yep. to be like, you're basically only going to see it in Europe. But if some really clever player playing in Southeast Asia, he might be able to start a revolution there. <laughs> yeah, nice. oh, yeah. We, we also the main, blocked the Meiji Restoration. Uh, we added uh, some just... important blockers as well for the revolution because you don't want to. You should. You're not able to become the revolution target to embrace the revolution if you're the emperor. Oh yeah, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. of course. That makes sense, yeah. Because that's just against everything that's holy and <laughs> perfect in life. <laughs> I assume I assume the Agreed. same would be true for oh, the Pope. And no revolutionary Pope, which was... Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, I revolutionary Byzantine Empire was always awful. Yeah, yeah. Oh, speaking of revolutionary stuff, 
The flags. Yes. Um, the tricolors for most countries when they go revolutionary, I think it can be fairly unanimously agreed on, were kind of awful. Yes. Have they been changed at <laughs> yes. all? Because oh, thank there God. Oh my goodness, not really? Unique ones added. I don't know an exact list, but uh, essentially, essentially uh, Caligula, who is one of the uh, content designers in E4, or or now he's in Stellaris, but like he. I, Essentially, like, all right, you're gonna do the content for the revolutions, and he's like, all right, you know what? These are ugly. Can I can I uh, update these? And I, yes, and he just basically did one almost for every country in the world. It feels like oh, that's wonderful, <laughs> magnificent. Give wonderful. that man a pay rise. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then <laughs> he also added unique content for like nations. So like Sweden will have a unique revolution event, like when it pops, like describing how how the royal castle in Stockholm gets uh, you know charged and so on. Awesome, beautiful, awesome. fantastic. I love it. Uh, we have we have several people in chat that are disappointed that you can't have the revolutionary battle pope. By the way, I'll I'll make a mod for it. Don't worry. <laughs> well, it's just sure sure break the entire game. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like re the revolution is against uh, the monarchies. It's against the papal power. It's about the, everyone's equality <laughs> and everything. Just. <laughs> It's a bit like having uh, Hitler leading the democratic uh, Americas. Yeah, basically. <laughs> well, yeah, you could yeah. you could you could be like Jude Law. You're the young pope. You're hip. You're subversive. <laughs> you're uh, you know Hello, fellow revolutionaries. <laughs> <laughs> He's got like the cap on and yeah, just yeah. I heart the guillotine shirt. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, I imagine uh, so it's locked out for republics. That's a given, right? I mean, like, <laughs> so you have. To, I assume you have to be a monarchy, like for a start. Oh, to be become revolutionary. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think. Yeah, I don't think any republic can become a revolutionary. I don't think we opened up that. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Al Alfred Strike says every man <laughs> like, a pope. So he's, he's have invented Dick March and become revolutionary. <laughs> Darth is oh. asking if revolutionary Mughals is possible, or if that's too OP. Yes, but you, I don't think you will have the Divan. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Divan is that similar culture mechanic, right? And I think the revolution... Because you become a republic, so that will not be available anymore to you. Okay. Well, that's the most OP part of the Mughals, yeah. so... No, nah, I'm keeping yeah. it. <laughs> we also have a question from Zelvik TV. Is the em can the Emperor of China become re revolutionary? Not while he is um, uh, Emperor of China, but I do think, like, uh, if you have been Emperor, like, I think uh, one of the contests added like a unique government name or something. Like, we have Heavenly Parliament, for instance. Mm. Uh, I mm. think there is some Easter egg like that hidden somewhere. Okay. You, can't, you can't control the mandate, I no, guess, as, no. as a republic. Like, yeah, yeah. That'd be, man man can you imagine them blessing <laughs> the blessing <laughs> the people? <laughs> <and it's> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was every mandate, just, yeah, mandate of heaven changes every four years by election. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it should be the it should God be answers the, to elections. <laughs> the uh, the neo yellow turban rebellion should be Apparently the uh, yeah. Yeah. There was a screenshot in a dev diary at some point of a revolutionary Ming. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think uh, if you look at that screenshot, he's not the mandate anymore. But he will probably have like a unique name because we've added that left and right. Like revolutionary Diff Martian is some uh, has a unique name, which is something like uh, uh, People's Junta or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Is there I a revolutionary it. Byzantium? Revolutionary Byzantium. I'm not. Sh sh I don't think it has anything unique. No. Because, because first off, that's that's heresy. But second, if it is in, <laughs> if it is possible, it needs something unique. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the, it, it could possible. be the new. Just for the meme potential. Oh yeah. Uh, I think it's already can... got a unique tricolor, which is actually quite a pretty one, right? It's, you can. It's uh, I thought it was brown. Purple, it? No, it's like purple, yellow, purple. Is that right? Mm, I think so. You can see all of them, uh, all of the old ones at least, on the Wiki page. It has them all listed there. 
You can I remember finally, the last time I did it, I was it was brown. One of the tri- there's no good, <laughs> no no flag that is any way like good looking has brown in it. Like come on, <laughs> it's it's like cool people. No, apparently it's blue. Huh. Different shades of blue. Okay. Um. So, uh, Johan, I asked Grugi earlier. Um. Uh. So I'll ask you now. What is your what has been like your favorite new thing about this patch or this expansion like either to work on or to play with or both oh this is a hard one uh <laughs> i can mention several things i like uh, how the governing how do you pr- name it governing capacity system works out mm-hmm. it um, makes for a more dynamic uh, growth game and you can really focus on making your own uh, different parts of the country different uh, I also like what we've done with the mercenaries in that they actually are a limit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and not just free manpower that you can re- reuse all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the idea of it becoming less and less relevant as the time goes by, because, like, you know, that's the way it should be, right? As, as things go towards professional armies. Yeah. But both of those yeah. are in the free patch. So let's think what did I like in the... In the expansion, let's say, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of like the concept of he- hegemonies or hegemons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I think this will yeah. be, I mean, it's a little bit, uh, a, a lot of, not everyone was universally loving the feature because it's caters to two types of game players that are not necessarily the majority of the forums. One of them is the multiplayer people, where you'll have uh, an interesting endgame campaign around the he- hegemons. And, yeah. of course, people playing World Conquest, they will love having hegemons. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm solidly in the multiplayer thing, and I think that'll just be a... Uh, combine that with revolutions, you got the hegemony and the revolutions, that just like adds so much tension to the end game, which you know is, was, is really lacking at the moment, right? I guess revolutionary target can sort of be thought of as the fourth hegemon type, maybe. Uh, so hegemon, like w- the military one, is a bit inspired by, like you know, the the uh, Bonaparte's France was the military hegemon essentially. Grand army. Yeah, mm-hmm. and before that, it was still France, right? Like France has been the military hegemon throughout history for quite a while. Until they all starved. Yes. It, until it does remind me a lot of the hegemony of mechanics actually does remind me a lot of the March of the Eagles, like has a similar sort of thing, mm-hmm. right? Of of naval domination and land domination. But that's more to do with victories, but similar sort of feel to it, right? Yeah. I assume England or Spain would become the naval dominant, right? <laughs> by that point of the game. Yeah. And then, uh, it, France, it's France it's France very much inspired by that. As like Napo- the Napoleonic era is one of my favorite eras and I played uh this uh, like I played a lot of uh, March of the Eagles. I think, yeah, March of the Eagles was released right before I started working at uh, Paradox. So I played that quite a bit. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that. Uh, I, that uh, connection uh, seemed very, very clear to me. Yeah, because of the the way that that worked in in March of the Eagles. Um, hmm. Yeah, March of the Eagles, very underrated game. You guys should yeah. check that out. <laughs> Particularly yeah. play it in multiplayer. I, I oh, don't yeah. know if it's the best single player. <laughs> yeah, game, yeah. It has to well, <laughs> the GUI has not aged well. It's complete <laughs> shit no. to play. I was uh, playing it again uh, like uh, half a year, a year ago. I'm like, please, God, gouge my eyes out. <laughs> and, uh, and not, so much, not so much it's ugly because it's like the tooltips are not uh, showing all cases and just like so many clicks to do various things and so on. It's yeah, even worse yeah. than CK2. Yeah, I mean, as we're Although developing do- the games, we learn, right? Like, uh, I can even see that in E4, you can see like certain parts being like, well, we this hasn't been touched since released, and you can see like you know, uh, the user experience is uh, uh, like worse than what it is like in the newer parts. Like, we've been learning and getting better and better at what we do. Mm-hmm. Mind yeah. you, I'll tell you what, like going back to Sengoku, which mm-hmm. is like a couple of months ago, that UI holds up. Like, it's, hmm. but it's very simple, I guess. 
Yeah, my my favorite thing that I miss about March of the Eagles is the uh, it would give you textual descriptions of what happened during each phase of the battle <laughs> that were dynamically generated. I, I loved that little bit of flavor. Uh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, mm, like you yeah, could scroll like through a dual the, fortress fight. Yeah, you could scroll through and like the battle wrap up and it'd tell you like what happened at, at you know different phases and like which regiments participated and stuff. So. Um, it's similar to the Chronicle in CK2 or the um, the little the end game screen in EU4 that that tells you like what happened during different wars and different reigns of different monarchs. But it was for every battle, which was cool. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, before we wrap up, if you guys in chat have any questions uh, again, uh, these guys can't talk about anything that hasn't been announced yet. Uh, obviously, but uh, if there's anything about you know the dev diaries that are already out uh, about the expansion, about the patch, whatever, uh, go ahead and drop them in chat right now. And, for the uh, for the both of you of the of the new features of the coming update and the patch, um, which do you think is going to change the game the most? Mercs, probably, right? Yeah, I would say well, Mercs. I don't know because uh, we're making the government reforms part of the free patch. Yeah, and I don't think everyone they were in Dharma only, right? Uh, and, yes, and not everyone played with Dharma. So for a lot of people, this will be a huge change of how you develop your country. Mm. But um, government capacity is also a huge change. There's a lot of different things. <laughs> yeah, one point thirty like changes a lot of the game at once. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've we've skirted over like two main features. We've talked a lot, a lot about revolutions and the mercenaries, but there's the imperial incidents, right? Which yeah, yeah. Seems, oh yeah, we have the imperial, uh, we have the empire stuff. Like, uh, hopefully, I mean, we'll be covering that in a dev diary as well at some point. But we've mm -hmm. mentioned that. Oh, here's something you're getting in the expansion in the in the thread. The claim what you deserve in the Rupert Universalis for Emperor thread. Uh, and of course, a complete overhaul of Catholicism, right? Yeah. Like, Pretty much, but I mean, th these things like so it's now more content, something more fun to do, because these mm -hmm. things have been in since the game started. So you know, if you've been playing for five thousand hours for seven years, you know, you might have gotten bored. So hopefully, yeah. this will you know make the make those part of the game new and like uh, like something exciting again for you. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Makes sense. yeah. A few questions in chat now. How yeah, was the name uh, of the DLC decided? Uh, it was actually the code name me and Jake used, <laughs> wasn't it? No, no, that was no, that's not true. That was the original name for what it should be called in ah. my original design. I thought all of your updates were and, based off books. Is there a book called Emperor that I'm missing? No, it's more like I like the name Emperor. And that's why I made a gay game called Imperator because it's <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> there you go. You heard it here first. Uh, another um, question: Were papal are papal states getting a mission tree? Oh uh, yeah. Nice, oh, nice, brilliant. Does it um, guide you towards Kingdom of God? Uh, that I don't know. But uh, uh, Neo DT will probably Jerusalem. make a dev diary on uh, on like Italian content and stuff sometime in the future. Let's see. Uh, there was... As long as he can crush the Luther and heretics, you know, that's, that's always the best bit. <laughs> <laughs> Maintain the Catholic, I mentioned me. Speaking uh, of heretics, what about the, the Hussites? Oh, what yeah. Are we them? allowed to talk about the Hussites yet? <laughs> no. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm a big, I'm, I'm a fan of uh, Mr. Jan Hus. And yeah, I, same. I'm, Excited After to playing see Kingdom Come Deliverance, yeah. so am I. Before, be well, yeah, I, I was excited about that quest in Kingdom Come Deliverance because I was already a fan, so I'm a hipster. Uh, <laughs> I'm a hipster Hussite. Yeah. And after it, playing it, it, you're a horny hipster. They ain't got, sh <laughs> they ain't got shit on the Lollards, right? The Lollards are the OG, <laughs> the OG Protestants. Uh, John Wycliffe. Are actually <laughs> My my favorite oh, yeah, medieval Cathars, heresy is the the Cathars actually, but uh, yeah, the Lollards are cool. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> the Hussites are the OGs, so I'm going with them, to be honest. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the, no, the Hussites have the defenestration. 
Exactly. Yeah, that's true. Who doesn't like throwing people out windows? Like, it's just, it's the best. <laughs> we do have a question in chat about, are you going to make a 1.3 dev clash? Yeah, at some point. Um, going up a little further, Pickle Pick said there was some discussion on the forums about taking a new look at expel minorities. Is there anything you can share about that? Uh, we have not done anything with it yet, but yeah. <sighs> to be honest, we are aware of the it, issues, it, it, right? Yeah, I would. If it weren't a paid feature, would you have just cut it right now? Yeah. Okay. Because it's yeah. as shit. As a uh, as a revolution, <laughs> you should be able to, to expel the monarchy. Who made it? I was like, oh no. Yeah, no. But <laughs> it's like you, you can find shitloads that we've done in the game that that I yeah. designed. That's pretty shit these I days. I okay. totally appreciate just how blunt you are. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, di- it didn't it didn't yeah. work out like we wanted it to, essentially. So like we we ha- haven't done any changes, uh, but like we are aware of the issues with it. Just like, you know, with uh, territory corruption and stuff like. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. Um, See, I quite like the corruption mechanic. You know, I think it's like a good break on the train, right? Um, yeah, but, but yeah, we've replaced it now with governing capacity instead, which is yeah, a yeah. lot more fun where you actually get a choice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, um, before we get out of here, uh, Johan Grugi, is there anything else you want to plug other than <laughs> your games, which we talk about every week? <laughs> um, I mean... Uh, Grugi, don't be shy. You're doing streams. You should check out Grugi's streams. Yeah. Because they're very good. Uh, yeah, so I, I do stream uh, uh, from time to time. I don't have a schedule or anything. You can find me Sir Grugi on Twitch. Uh, and yeah, you can even see my emotes coming in chat uh, every now and then here in NoCB cast. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Johan, anything you want to plug? Uh, well, have I, a... I have this company. I'm a part owner and founder oh, of really? called Paradox. Have you heard about them? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> really? Uh, what do you guys do? What is it? Yeah, okay. what? What do you do? Yeah. Is there anything interesting coming from them in the near future? I don't know. Video games. Is that is that like Madden? Is that you guys make like... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's across the street from the old office. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. true. Uh, I've heard of it. It's like kind of like a worst creative assembly, I think. <laughs> oh, 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 wow. oh, yeah. You just made some enemies. Te- technically, some technically, they're probably better than us because they sell more copies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, actually, I've been looking at them as like, you know, how do they present things and so on? And like, you know, uh, trying to understand like some choices they make, like they, they have a lot flashier interface than us, like compare in comparison. And yeah. now you see, you know, <laughs> Secret Free has a lot flashier interface. Yeah. But just but slow also, load times, slow load times, God, slow yeah. load times. Yeah. 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 And I, I mean, I'm not going to say anything because it's like E4 is slow, loading <laughs> slowly these days, but... Playing Imperator, you're on used a to SSD. the newer projects. <laughs> yeah, an Imperator, or I keep saying Titus, but I supposed to say Seeker Free these days. Like that load instantly. God. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, uh, well, it's unless you have a, a solid state drive, right? Like, it's it's really annoying. Yeah. Playing, playing well, the other tools. interesting thing though is that I've uh, we've talked about on the other strategy podcast. I'm on three moves ahead about like the paradoxification of total war because they've incorporated a lot of mechanics recently that have existed in paradox games uh for a long time so i think there's i think there's some knowledge sharing going on uh to some degree or at least watching watching what other other companies are doing and incorporating the best parts of that which i think is is cool for everybody so What's the saying? Uh, imitation is the highest form of flattery, or something like that. Yeah. Yes. Right. That, that's the same. Yeah, but we look at them quite a lot. So, and they look at us. So everyone yeah. looks at every game. I mean, yeah. yeah I mean, we like strategy games. That's why why we make them. So I play a well, lot of strategy I, games. I think it was mentioned at PDXCon how all the different games that have been inspiration or. Uh, can't think of the right word, but inspiration for 
what you do at Paradox in terms of what people like to play. Civilization was on that list. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. Civilization. Definitely. Yeah. Well, well, me yeah, personally, don't cool. play Civilization, I, or Tower. I don't play. I don't play turn-based. Nah, I, I used to play turn-based back in the day. I played Civ shitloads, but these days, not really. And if I play, yeah, I, I'm the same. Yeah. I don't really play much non non paradox strategy games these days because I don't really have the time. I mean, be, besides uh, working lots and having a family and life, I also have an important uh, hobby as hardcore raiding. In <laughs> one class, in, <laughs> not really hardcore raiding, where kind of shit. It takes us two hours to clear Blackfinger Lair, so. <laughs> I'm waiting for the inevitable right. WoW, WoW classic uh, content that's going to seep into. No, it's yeah, cool. what, uh, <laughs> what class do you play in classic? Warrior, of course. Okay, cool. I'm dead female uh, because it has the coolest animations when you do heroic strike. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, I, so I was more of a RuneScape guy. <laughs> I, put I played, so many I, hours I, I played wow RuneScape in before I played WoW. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, Viking Nephilim in chat wants you guys to say this sentence in Swedish, but I think oh, the it'd tongue be twister. If I, yeah, fuck if no. I try to say it because <laughs> I, I have, I have a very uh, limited understanding of Swedish, but I think it's it's shu 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 ka shu men skrittes av shu skrittes shu yeah that's more Norwegian yeah and he was <laughs> I, 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 I actually speak accent. Norwegian I actually speak Norwegian so the intonation is definitely Norwegian <laughs> I, I'm a two in Swedish, so I might be able to. Right, so let let me try. Shu shirshirka Sherman shirtis of shu shirna shirtshirta. Shu skirt. Fuck it. I missed the last word. Fuck it. Oh god. I won't say it in Swedish. I'll do it in Scanian instead. Shu skär skjuka skärmen. Skjuta så skjuta skär. Skjuta. Okay, that's. Yeah, you fell. You fell the last word as well. Yeah, because I wrote it wrong. It's misspelling. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. that's why that's why we both dropped it. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that's why that's why I can't do it. I would if it was spelled correctly, <laughs> I would have done it. I could do it perfectly, but uh, in, I, don't, I don't deal with fo- shoddy stuff like this, you know, if you want <laughs> you know, like misspellings <laughs> like that. There's not enough L's in it for you, is what you're trying to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. So, Oh, that, that, it's funny because yeah. uh, in, in Finland, Svensk, um, it's shu, and then in Swedish, Swedish, it's like who, cool. which is, is funny. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Um. Well, Johan Grugi, thanks so much for uh, stopping by and talking to us. Cheers. Um, yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah. As usual, before mm. uh, before we head out, uh, Rose, where can people find what you've been doing and what have you been up to lately? You can find me here on Twitch and over on YouTube as Enigmatic Rose 4. Here on Twitch, I've been playing some CK2 and RimWorld with the new royalty expansion. And over on EU4, I just started a brand new succession game with four other awesome YouTubers, including Lambert right here. If he wants to tell you about it. (laughs) Yeah, so Lambert, what have you been up to? Uh, More Imperator Rome. It's it's kind of taken over my channel, if I'm honest. Um... (laughs) But yeah, going back to E4 with uh, the Succession campaign, which has been a lot of fun. Um, it's been a struggle to try and get the game working because I don't like the launcher and the launcher doesn't like me, but found some hacky workarounds to get the game to load. So that's good. Um, but yeah, lots of um, lots of basically paradoxes. Yeah, is, is my channel. So uh, Lambert2191 on YouTube and also on DLive. And, uh, Loris, where can people find the stuff you've been working on? Um, chapelcomic.com and also on Twitter and Reddit and all those places. And, uh, I've been working mainly on some stuff for Anno, which should be done hopefully in the next few days. Been working like nonstop on that for the last God knows how long and also on humankind. Um, so stuff, Excellent. stuff to look forward to in the near future. Fingers crossed. And, uh, if I don't die from exhaustion. <laughs> as always you can find me on twitter i'm at asa tj that's a-s-a-t-j 
Um, I do video game reviews for a couple different sites. Uh, my review of Romance of the Three Kingdoms 14 will be coming out soon. Uh, for those of you who, who like uh, th need to get more of a Three Kingdoms fix after Total War. Um, and uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this week. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye. See you later.